All right, so welcome to this eighth video in the clinical reasoning thing, and we're going to talk about Bayesian reasoning. And don't worry about the name. Uh, it's a, we're going to go through it all pretty easily. Okay, so again, here we are with our framework, and Bayesian reasoning uh, falls over here. It's part of prioritizing your differential diagnosis, and what it is, it's the ability to go from your pretest to your protest post-test probability. And so let's look at that. Let's say we have our patient with a disease and they have a pretest probability here and you set this one at around 33% and then you want to order some sort of test and get to uh, probability or post-test probability. Because remember, maybe our pretest probability here is within our test it zone and we need to push this thing into either the trash it or treat it zones. So we order a test and the test is positive and it pushes it up. And so we went from, let's say, 33 uh, percent to 73 percent so our positive test was able to do that similarly you could have a negative test which does the opposite it lowers the probability the post test probability so we started at 33 percent the test was negative and it brought us down to let's say 13 percent and so that's what tests help us do they lower our probability uh, the pretest probability you do a test and then you get your post test probability now, different tests can lower your probability different amounts. And so we have two tests here, test A and test B. Test A is not so great, and test B is much better, because you can see here that you start with 33%, and it brings you down to about 27%. So not a real big decrease, whereas you can see test B did much better, right? It dropped us down here to 13%. Similarly, with the positive test, you could do the same thing. This test B te over here is not so great. It only got you from 33 to, let's say, 57, whereas test A shot you way up to like 95% post-test probability. And so post, so test A is much better when it's positive. And uh, a particular test can actually be good when it's positive and bad when it's negative and, and bad when it's, uh, and you know, it, it, and vice versa. And so in this case, you could see test A is really good when it's positive, but when it's negative, not so much. Uh, and test B is just the opposite. It's pretty good when it's negative. And when it's positive, it doesn't really do that much. And so what you would say here is that test A is more specific than test B uh, in getting the disease. It helps you rule in a disease better. Test B is more sensitive than test A. It's going to help you rule out a disease. And so you remember from our video on sensitivity and specificity, uh, if specificity, if positive, uh, will help you rule in a disease. So if some, a test has high specificity, like test A has higher specificity than test B, it helps you rule in a disease. And the negative is the opposite, right? So with sensitivity, if a test is negative, will help you rule out a disease. And that's what we looked at over here. And this is our pig that says, uh, he's spitting the basketball and he's got a snout. So spin and snout. And so now let's look at how this works with interpreting tests. So we got the probability of disease for three patients here. One is pretty low probability. One is in our tested zone, and the other one's higher up in our tested zone. And we want to get each one of these diagnoses, each one of these patients into one of these three categories, right? We prefer to get them into actually treat it or trash it. If we're in the tested zone, we know we have more to do. So we get a test on this one, okay? And so this test... When it was positive, it brought us up some, but we're still in a trash it zone. So it, it didn't change anything we were going to do with this person, right? We were not going to consider this diagnosis. Ordering the test means, you know, got us to here, which was where we still said we're not going to consider that diagnosis. So this test was actually unnecessary to do, right? Because it really didn't change our management. We didn't, we didn't move it up some. And we really thought it was low suspicion to begin with, so we shouldn't have ordered a test on it. Anyway, so that's lesson to learn. If you think that a patient has low likelihood or very unlikely disease, do you really want to get it? If it falls below your uh, testing threshold, you don't want to order a test on it, right? Let's look at another one. Okay, so this gentleman here, uh, he's got the pretest probability that was 33, and he went up to 55, let's say, or 57. And so in this case, the positive test did raise it some, but it didn't raise it enough to help us do anything, right? We went from our we don't, I don't know category, which is that I need to still test it, to stay in the I don't know category, I need to still test it. So this test was really not helpful. So a lot of times there are tests that are not going to be helpful. Like for example, if you have a patient who has a medium suspicion of a blood clot in their lungs, there's a blood test you can do called a D-dimer. And in those cases, getting that test, even if it's positive or negative, doesn't really help you. It just leaves you in that I don't know category. So you 
want to pick a different test, one that has uh, better testing characteristics. So that's one another lesson we want to learn here. Now let's look at the third person. So this person was, you know, moderate, you know, much higher probability, still in the, un, you know, I don't know category, and then I still need to test it. But the test was positive, and it pushed it up into the treated category, right? So we're at, let's say, about 85% here. And so this one did change management. And so this was a test that was useful to us. It took us from not knowing, you know, whether the patient had disease, and it let us cross the treatment threshold into the treatment category and allows us to to treat it. And so this is basically what Bayesian reasoning is. It is the ability to apply a test to your pretest probability and move your post-test probability up or down. Uh, we're going to look at it, uh, in this is a more of an intuitive picture of it, we're going to look at it more numerically in the coming videos. But I just wanted you to kind of get an idea about what this is. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And thank you for watching.